Hi, this is Ron Turner. Welcome to this episode of Front Runner 2020. As I explained at the beginning, I have been reviewing and organizing the questions as they come in during the presentation. The first question, David, is about your personal experience, if you don't mind, um, talking about the time that uh, when you got started running for Plano City Council and um, what was your preparation leading up to that and go where you will with this question where everything might be a, a salient point about an organization where you were active. Well, good question. Of course, as I was preparing this, I started thinking about, well, how, how would I have scored on this? Actually, I, I personally uh, was active in seven of the uh, eight, uh, all but the Rotary Club, and I'm still getting lots of invitations to, to join the Rotary Clubs in my area. <laughs> and I was in a leadership position or some sort of tier two position in six out of the uh, seven. Uh, the one organization I was simply a member of, uh, actually several were, were the uh, PTAs at my children's schools. Uh, my, my particular passion uh, was the homeowners associations, that still is by the way, mm -hmm. and uh, I did get elected to uh, city council, uh, but the uh, homeowner associations, uh, you know, particularly during the period uh, before I came on council when the city was rapidly growing, uh, there were a lot of planning and zoning issues, uh, a lot of uh, you know, homeowner versus developer uh, type of issues, and uh, you know, that you know, very well uh, prepared me to uh, go on to city council. And if I didn't mention it before, uh, homeowner associations are great uh, leadership development opportunities. Uh, you, know, you really haven't been tested until you have dealt with a bitter neighbor versus neighbor <laughs> kind of problem. You know, uh, thanks for making that point because in preparing for this, that is something that we talked about, you know, as for myself having worked in both business environments and uh, volunteer and political environments, um, I'm frustrated by business people who think that strong business experience is enough to just immediately step into government or politics or nonprofits, and um, you're absolutely right. Those things are very different, aren't they? Oh yes, I mean, strong business experience is a very good background to bring in, and uh, yeah, I, I had that, and particularly uh, on the financial side, uh, you know, that helped me. I jumped right into uh, the city finance committee. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the people side is very different. Uh, you know, when, when I was a, a manager and would assign people to an activity and we'd have our, our first team meeting uh, on a Monday morning, you know, 95 to 100 percent of that team would show up. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're, uh, virtually any of these nonprofit organizations I've mentioned, you know, or later your campaign, you have a bunch of folks assigned to an activity, and you have your first activity. Uh, you, you might be doing well for half of them to show up. That's that's a key difference, isn't it? Yeah, and, and actually, uh, yeah, you can probably do a, a whole uh, uh, evening seminar just on uh, on volunteer management. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, also, I should. Let, let <laughs> I'll write that down. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I'll also mention that uh, the you know, public sector 
you know, management, culture, so forth, you know, is quite a bit different from uh, typical corporate culture. Now, I was fortunate to have been part of a corporation that had government clients, so you know, I, I had some uh, you know insight into that. But you, you, you know that there can be a lot of surprises for somebody who had uh, just the business experience to, to try and jump into dealing with public sector matters. And by the way, this is where these leadership programs, you know, City Hall 101, uh, so forth, are, are very important because it does give you some insight into to how this other world works. Great. Yeah, let's draw people's attention back to that point, those programs, to learn uh, what's under the hood and how that works. In fact, I remember Nancy making a mm -hmm. point of that is that some people had, that she remembers who had won elections ended up being somewhat handicapped once they took office because they were weak on the knowledge of, of the, the governmental structure. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and um, present a question we have one from Johnny coming up, and so I will unmute her microphone. Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, David, it's nice to meet you. I'm Johnny Pegues. Uh Thank you for what you've been telling yes. us. It's most interesting. Um, I have always been a volunteer. I mean, I volunteer for everything. but. Um, how would I transition to a leadership position in one of the organizations that you've talked about? I mean, I'm the ultimate volunteer. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, I've I found most volunteer organizations are, are clamoring for leaders. I mean, they're clamoring <laughs> for people who will ser serve on their, their boards, you know, take uh, committee chairships, and so forth. So I just volunteer to lead. Uh, yes. Cool. Too simple. So step it, forward. It's almost, <laughs> it almost does sound too simple because, you know, <laughs> I just take assignments when they hand them out. I, I don't mind doing that at all. I can tell you some of my experience, and I don't come anywhere close to scoring high on David's uh, evaluation, but I know in one case in an organization – led by David uh, many years ago. I just first emerged and, and showed up with some skills and and offered myself to be available. And David remembers that I was put to very good use in leadership positions just by saying I would do it. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Johnny. Sure, Ron. Glad to do it. Glad to see you, David. Here's a question submitted by text, and um, I'm going to be able to use a really cheap pun, um, knowing that uh, the the object of it can't retaliate. Um, someone named Michael does not have a working mic on his computer. Uh, okay, try to control your laughter. All right, so anyway, here's the question, and this is something that David, I, ho I hope you know about this because it's not something that I understand, but um, he makes a point that uh, in Texas, every school campus must have a campus improvement committee and anyone can serve. You can volunteer at the school. Uh, district committees are mandated as well and can have a major role in setting the school board's agenda. So mm -hmm. do you know about this, and can you comment on that as an avenue for community civic engagement? Well, well yes, I, I know of them. And I did I'll just mention uh, school district committees uh, you know, briefly. And I probably should mention that there are a number of uh, of school-based committees 
uh, you know, mandated either either by the state or or, or the school district. Um, yeah, you know, it's generally very easy to get on these committees, particularly the school-based ones, because uh, you know they they are looking for for volunteers. And by the way, I found uh, one type of committee, one health-related committee, uh, in my school district. Uh, it turned out there there were campuses that didn't have them. Uh, and so, so people started coming forward, and they got the the committees formed. All ah, right. Okay. Well, that's another point about volunteers. That is, sometimes there are positions that are going vacant because there aren't enough people showing up. Mm -hmm. Well, let me present. Yeah, sometimes a good. Go ahead. I was saying sometimes a, a, a good initial conversation might be with the principal of the school. You know, mm -hmm. Ask him or her you know, you know, where they need help, where, where, where are some holes that you could fill. You know, that's a great suggestion because I think sometimes people are, I uh, can't think of the right word, but say inhibited by the, the size of the challenge of, you know, going into a big organization or, uh, some large statewide advocacy group where it can begin right in your own neighborhood at your own school. Okay. I guess the bottom line is you know, become civically engaged. Uh, you'll, you'll find uh, you're going to start to be doing some good things uh, even uh, though you may not yet be in public office you certainly will become better informed, better prepared. Uh, you may have a much better network of supporters. You know, there's really nothing to, to lose uh, other than your personal time, but uh, along the way you can pick up some time management skills. Another side benefit. Great. Thanks, David. This has been a great okay. presentation. Uh, very practical. And I appreciate all of the time you spent preparing for this and, uh, and giving the information. And I know that you did say it was okay for people to follow up with you. I have the slide on there. Why don't you go ahead and highlight your preferred methods of contact? Uh you can certainly give me a call, 972-516-3849. Uh, you can also reach me through uh, email, and the email address is dmsmithiv at aol.com. That's D as in David, M as in middle, Smith as in Smith, IV as in Roman numeral 4 at AOL.com. You can also find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and so forth. I'm David M. Smith in Plano, Texas. And I'd be happy to, to field uh, questions from uh, any or all of you all. Thank you.